This is the largest sacrificial site in the Middle East. This is called Petra. Now on this plat flat platform, they offered, according to local tradition, a virgin every year. She was locked up down at Wadi Musa, and there was a ritual. And then the steps we came up, this virgin was brought up here. But can you imagine the agony of this girl? She was going to be offered to, uh, to the gods of Petra, Al Uzza and Dashura. Uh, they were sacrificing and worshiping the sun. Now they believed that they had to appease their gods every year. The best offer they could bring was a virgin. So she was placed on this altar. <coughs> Down there. Now, whenever you have an obelisk <coughs> on an archaeological site, and you've got two here, the Arabic is zip atuf. You've got two obelisks there. And if you have a, a sacrificial site close to the obelisk, this meant uh, human sacrifices. You have this at Kizer in Israel. You have this in Biblos in Lebanon. So according to the archaeological data, this is where they offered human sacrifices. They believed that uh, the gods had to be pleased. But uh, what is so interesting is the fact that just over there, the white spot, is the tomb of Aaron. And here you have a typical example of the two religions. The one says, offered to earn God's favor. On that side, Aaron said, no, you bring a lamb, a symbol of Christ. He suffice for your mistakes, your failures. You bring the offer of a lamb, Jesus Christ. God accepts you because of that offer, not because of your poor offer, because what are we? We've got nothing to offer. So when the sun touched those two uh, obelisks at the bottom, the priests were watching the sun. And as soon as the sun touched the top, the sharp knife went into a bosom. They ripped out the bosom. They went up here. And here they sacrificed it to the sun. And the ritual was concluded. And then afterwards, the priests went to that so-called holy pool and they washed their hands. And then the body were placed here and sacrificed with fire to the sun. And then Petra would just go on for another year. But this is a tremendous sight to visit and just to think of the cruelty of their religion. A religion makes you cruel or makes you kind. Genuine religion makes you kind to people. Cruel religion makes you cruel to people. Uh, the Horites used to live here, and then the Edomites came. Now, the Horites, it comes from an ancient word of cave. They thought these people were barbarians. But the archaeologists discovered that they were a highly civilized civilization. And they've just discovered another site, a huge capital in Syria, near the Iraqi border, where the Horites are being discovered lately. And then Edom came in the form of Esau. He was the, uh, the forefather of the Edomites. And he captured Petra and he lived here. So this is where Esau, Esau means red, he loved red. So he came and he lived here amongst the rose red rocks of Petra. Eventually the Nabataeans took over and then the Romans came. And today you are the audience. And you walk on tremendous history. Petra means rock in Greek. In Hebrew, it is Sila. And the Lord says, He wants to be our rock. 
because we are like a little pebble. We haven't got much firmness in us, but He wants to be our firmness. So He invites the little rocks, like you and me, to, uh, to hide in the Rock of Ages, cleft for me. This is the, the message of, of Petra. And of course, uh, when you go back into history, uh, Miriam, according to Josephus, the great uh, historic, uh, historian, uh, at Deir is the place where Miriam was buried. Over there on Mount Hor, uh, expired a tremendous emotional experience. Aaron and his brother, Moses, came all the way from Egypt. The Lord said, it's time for Aaron to go. He didn't do too well, and uh, he must go and rest. Sometimes the Lord wants us to rest. And I can imagine walking up there, the two brothers. This was an emotional moment. They were going to say goodbye to one another. And I imagine the speech. Brother Aaron, I'm going to miss you. Moses, I'm sorry. I've given you some grief in life. And there, Aaron died in the arms of Moses. And Moses took out his clothes and put this onto his son, Eliezer. So this is what happened there. But as I said before, true religion says somebody else paid the price. You've got to be humble enough to accept the gift. You cannot add to it. In Latin they say, sola gratia. Accept the gift, it's yours. Don't try and compensate for your bad deeds, for your misdeeds, for your sins. Say, God, thank you for forgiving me and accepting it. And you are relieved from a lot of baggage. May God bless you as you meditate on the story of Petra. By the way, Alexander the Great couldn't capture this place because of the sick. This is where Herod the Great lived. This is where he was brought up. And according to some scholars, this is where Paul spent some of his 14 years in the desert. So there's a very rich history at Petra, and they're still continuing discovering new archaeological finds. Now, after 25 years, Herod from Mukavir met his brother-sister, and the tragedy happened. He left his wife, Huldu, and she came back to her father, who was still king here at Petra. His Greek name, according to uh, Corinthians, was Arietas. His uh, Nabatean name was Harit the fourth. So she came back here. And somehow she must have heard about the news. How John the Baptist was beheaded. This man wanted to save their marriage. He didn't succeed, he was beheaded. And she must thought about, must have thought about John in his loneliness, because suddenly she was also in a kind of a loneliness, a rejection. Rejection is the worst pain one can experience. And then one Friday, her husband, Antipas, had Jesus in front of him, and he was the judge. And she heard about her husband judging Christ. And I think she heard about the most lonely death in history, when Christ died on Calvary. I wonder if Huldu the daughter of Arietas accepted the gift of Calvary. This is the most important decision one can take, accept the gift of Calvary. We will not be lost one day because of sinning, but because of refusing to accept salvation. So one day in heaven, I hope I'll meet her there, I'm going to speak to Huldu, the lonely lady, 
But there's a beautiful promise. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me, believe also in God. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. On this planet, we have tears, death and sickness. But there's a land coming without tears, without death, without sickness. Made possible by God's loving heart in giving his son for us. Okay, the maiden was laid down here. Four priests held it down, arms and legs. And when the sun came up, he put in his knife, ripped out the heart, walked up there, and in the sun disk, he offered the offer, the bleeding heart, to Dashura and Al Uzza, the gods of, of Petra. And then the body was burnt over here. And down below in Wadi Faraza, a father and a mother were crying. Oh, my child. It's a sad story, but sadness is going to end one of these days, and she'll never break your heart again. Uh, I'm sitting on Jabal Matba. Jabal is the Arabic name for mountain. Now, to my back is a very interesting mountain. Uh, this is where they discovered some Edomite ruins, Um al Bayara. The Bible refers to an incident where one of our kings from Judah uh, pushed down 10,000 Edomites, and this was the mountain. So this is a place of cruelty, and God wants us to, to be kind. It's, it's so amazing to walk here and study the history of the Edomites, and the story of Esau becomes more relevant. It speaks to our hearts. And of course, in the book of Obadiah, we have prophecies concerning the end of uh, the reign of Edom. They were very proud. And when Jerusalem was destroyed, they, they rejoiced in their calamity. God doesn't want us to rejoice in the calamity of our enemies. May he help us to have kind hearts and a kind attitude toward ugly people. God bless. Mm -hmm.